Well, you know, some people say ego is edging God out. The ego is a death wish. It's, it's the belief that there is no God. It's the belief that love is impossible. It's the belief in separation. And some people will say, well, what is the point of the ego? And uh, it doesn't have a point. <laughs> uh, in fact, being an illusion, you know, illusion is not real, and, and reality is the point. And the ego is like a denial of reality. So, I mean, what, what would be the purpose of a death wish uh, in, in terms of eternal life? It doesn't have a purpose. So then we could say that since it's just a belief, Jesus says, you made the ego by believing in it, and you can dispel it by withdrawing your belief from it. So, there's a song that uh, Helena likes to sing too, it's, you know, I'm not the clothes I wear, I'm not all these different things. Um, and it's so beautiful because it's like, there's two things in the mind that the, the singer is saying that, and one of them is that, that I am love and I am free. I believe, help my unbelief. In other words, help any help my mind free itself of anything where I am not in the belief of forgiveness and that I'm not aligned with God. Help my unbelief. Take from me anything in my mind that's an obstacle to the awareness of love's presence. So it's kind of cool because when you look at this world and you say, well, the ego made this world, then, then what's the point of this world? And we could say the only point this world have is forgiveness, which would be to see it with the Holy Spirit. That is the only point that this world has. And the only point we could say that's lined up with that for the ego would be the retranslation of everything that the ego made in hate. So this world was made in hate. Uh, this world was made in guilt. This world was made as a, as a distracted device, as a separating device, as a way of reinforcing guilt. So the point of this world would be to forgive it. And in that sense it is to release it. So there's not like you're trying to try to come up with something valuable about the world, but it's more of just being willing in any instant to value peace of mind more than the images of the world. And that's been my whole practice to the point where whatever the body's eyes seem to perceive and the body's eyes seem to hear, whatever the, the feel, the touch, whatever the five senses report, it after a while you start to realize that there's a small still voice in your mind that is the way. And these interpretations that are based on the five senses, you know, aren't going to get the job done. They're not going to get us back to the kingdom of heaven. And so you quit valuing them. And and yet life goes along joyfully, miraculously, and nothing's lost. You know, oh, oh the Dow Jones average uh, <laughs> dropped 400 points. Okay. Oh, it, it climbed 300. All right. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like I, I live a life where I've kind of got so into the flow of trust of spirit that I, it's a life of non-possession. So when you don't possess anything, nothing can be taken away from you or given you, you know, in a material way. You know, it's, it's just a state of mind. So you literally, uh, it's more like all the world's a stage and every was, everyone plays their part, but it's also much to do about nothing. So Shakespeare <laughs> had it covered on both, both angles, you know. <laughs> very wise. Yeah. Very, very wise. I'd like to find out more about the singer that was in the middle of Eric and JP, because during the first song, whoever you are over there, you were, your arms were out, and you were like in heaven, and I want, I want more of that. You know? I, I want another round of that. Where are you? There she is, Armel. Yes. You can see a lot of willingness behind those waving arms. She actually, see, the, a lot of you don't know the story, but she received the guidance from the Holy Spirit that she was to get married 
in how many days? 15. In 15 days to a man that she had never met. Whoa. And Whoa. she followed the guidance and there is her husband right next to her. What? Yes. <laughs> That's what we call following the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and he had never met her either. So Whoa. that was a leap of faith. And it's being used for the glory of God, that's for sure. Wow. Yeah. No judgment there. <laughs> you know, since there's no secret thoughts, I got a judgment going on. I'm freaking out. But I can release that. I yes. Can give it to See, Spirit. you can expose anything. I can here. expose it. Is everyone okay with me? Oh, yeah. Now I feel guilty. Yeah. I can give that to the Holy That's Spirit. exactly how it works. That's it. Yes. Yes. It's beautiful. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Um, you know, I wanted to ask about forgiveness because when I started on my path, um, I gave a lot of thought to uh, forgiving my mother and my father who are deceased in my childhood. And um, then I came to think about... Um, well, I need to forgive myself, you know, and I didn't understand that. Could you talk about that? Yeah. Yeah, it seems the question is about forgiveness and, and forgiving ourselves and forgiving others. And in the Bible it said, forgive 70 times 7, you know, in kind of insinuating that we have to practice this forgiveness thing, you know, that it would, it would take a lot of actual <laughs> practical application. Um, and, and what it is, is uh, actually there's a movie that I, I, I talk about on YouTube, uh, and there's a movie I recommend with George Clooney, and so it's easy, it's easy on your eyes. And so, so I, anyway, it's called Solaris. And I tell them about this movie because it's like going off to this planet with all these mystical kind of lights around it and so forth. But the planet seems to represent, um, it represents the, the divine law of what all that I give, I give to myself. And giving and receiving are the same. Here on earth, when that law is pushed out of awareness, it seems like it takes time. It takes time to forgive, it takes time to work through the lessons. Um, when people die, like your parents, then they're deceased and you, you know, they're not there anymore, but you still have thoughts about them and memories that you're working with and interpretations and so forth. So in this movie, uh, George Clooney plays a psychologist who goes up to Solaris and he can't understand anything that's happening up there because his wife had, had committed suicide uh, a number of years ago and um, when he's up at Solaris, she comes back. You know, in other words, the dead and gone are not really dead and gone. Uh, he's still thinking about her, and she's right there. And he has to work through all of his forgiveness in a kind of a real sped up way, because it's in his face. He even tries to get rid of her, put her in an escape pod and <laughs> get, project her out there into space, like get rid of her again. But there she comes again, you know when he's sleeping at night and so forth. And in one sense, that's what forgiveness is. It's like, it keeps coming at us when we start to realize that the people in our lives, they were just acting out our belief system. So if we seem to be victimized or mistreated, or we didn't get the, the treatment that we felt we deserved, they were simply acting out our, our own unconscious guilt, our belief system. They were doing a great job of it too. Academy Award, Oscar to mom and dad for for those performances but all we we never we weren't remembering them as they truly are we were just remembering the past grievances that we've kept in our mind and they acted them out and when we meet people even on this planet even the live ones so to speak we never really fully meet in the present it's always through a filter of the ego past so we're just perceiving in them what we still 
have unresolved within our own consciousness or whatever what we still have a grievance on and they actually are doing us a favor you know the ones we think are the biggest jerks the biggest idiots the most insensitive people they're actually helping us go past this repression denial mechanism and they're acting it out right in front of us so that we can react and have all those emotions and bring them back up into awareness and actually give them over to the Holy Spirit and and have a miraculous experience. So just by thinking of, of your mom and dad is of course activating these memories and these emotions and and it's part of that clearing. Even if they aren't physically in your life, there's still the spirit's still using that. When we dream of them, when we ponder them, when we think of them, it's it's still part of that. And in the movie Solaris, George Clooney's got to go through this, all these emotions all over again with his wife. He finally kind of yields into this light of Solaris. And when he finds himself back on Earth, he can hardly relate to Earth anymore because he's had such a transformation experience. And then suddenly his, his wife appears and she's got a message for him and the message is, Everything is forgiven. Everything. As his eyes are just really big. That's that's where this is all heading. It's heading towards a purification. So the Course, Jesus says, when you meet anyone, remember it as a holy encounter. As you see him, you will see yourself. As you treat him, you will treat yourself. As you think of him, you will think of yourself. Never forget this, for in him you will find yourself or lose yourself. And it turns relationships into this glorious, glorious mechanism of forgiveness, which is really the only f purpose that relationships have, to inspire and bless, to help us remember the truth of who we really are. What about, what about a grief and loss, just, just a sense of missing someone? Is that, would that be kind of what you're saying, that there is no place for that? Really? I mean, yeah, this belief in loss or, or sacrifice is at the core, that's what the ego is. Whereas spirit is fully abundant and whole and complete, the belief in loss and lack um, and grief is all tied into this, is what the ego is. It's always missing. It, it, it's telling us that we're missing out on something, or we're missing something good that we had in the past, but we no longer have it. And um, it's, it's based on linear time, it's based on avoiding the present moment, and avoiding eternity, and staying in this loop of not enough, never get enough, and when I have something of value, it gets taken away. That's what this whole cosmos is about. So the, the answer to it is through being a miracle worker. It's like we, we have tried to fulfill that sense of lack in so many ways. And, and this world seems to offer many. But it, you know how Jesus said, drink of me and you will never thirst again. He's really saying, join me in the miracle and we will experience together a fulfillment that has no lack in it, no missing. And so that's one of those deep roots that I know uh, for me that's what the whole journey was about. It was about going down and getting to the core of that root. Because as long as there's any sense of unfulfillment, any sense of that inner sense of something's missing, then the mind just seems to seek, seek, seek in terms of form and never gets fulfilled. You know, it just doesn't do it in this world. So it's more of a of a negation of starting to realize, ah, I, I need not seek for it in form. I need to find my function. I need to find my purpose because that's the only way I'm going to find my uh, fulfillment. Yeah. Yeah, Mary, you have a question? Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I've been thinking about 